Hello everyone, you are watching Sahib Academy. If you like our videos, then please subscribe to our channel and also hit the bell icon for the regular updates and also follow us on Instagram, Sahib Academy. Now let's go to the video. Hi everyone, this is the second video of Higher Purchase System and in the previous video we saw the concept of higher purchase system and also the journal entries that we need to record under higher purchase system now in this video we are going to see the format of this working note the scenarios in which questions may come and also the accounts that we need to prepare under higher purchase system so let's start off with the format of this working note this is a working note that you need to do this table for the calculation of principal and interest all right and the format of this working note may differ from your books it is a working note okay it doesn't matter it's just a working note you can do any way you like all right but we will follow this one here now first column here it is year column okay whatever year years are given in the question you have to take that and then installment column now what is installment installment means see whenever you need to calculate the installment you need to add these two column interest and principal because installment comprises of installment comprises of interest and principal if the installment is not given in the question you just have to first calculate the interest and then add it with principal amount you will get installment okay this is what is meant by installment installment includes principal amount as well as interest then how to calculate interest see to calculate interest it's very simple you just have to the percentage will be given to you in the question you just have to calculate the interest on outstanding balance okay always remember interest will always be calculated on the outstanding balance suppose for example let's say you purchase a car of cash price 10 lakh okay on loan basis or higher purchase basis see let's say you made a down payment on the first day itself 1 lakh now that 1 lakh will not include any sort of interest right because down payment is made on the spot so there will be no interest in it so now how much is outstanding 9 lakh is outstanding now in the next year let's say you purchase this car in the year of 2017 okay first April 2017 now it is March let's say it is March now in March let's say 1 lakh installment is becoming due so now you will pay one lakh installment but you have to pay it along with the interest along with interest so interest will be calculated on not on one lakh not on the due amount it will be calculated upon the outstanding balance that is nine lakh all right always interest will be calculated upon nine lakh okay i mean the outstanding balance whatever it is outstanding that you have to pay so interest will always be calculated upon outstanding balance and down payment the payment which is done in the beginning will not include any sort of interest it will be pure principal amount so interest will be calculated on the outstanding balance and if the principal amount is not given in the question let's say installment is given and interest rate was given so you calculated the interest and then you have to deduct see to calculate principal amount you need to deduct these two you need to deduct you need to subtract interest from installment then you will get then you will get principal amount see how simple it is this is the way you need to prepare this working note that first write the installment then calculate the interest and then deduct the interest from installment and then you will get the principal amount simple and you have to deduct as you make installment payments you have to deduct the cash price over here Suppose first down payment is 1 lakh, then 9 lakh would be outstanding if the cash price is 10 lakh and then you paid 1 lakh 50,000. Depends upon the question, you have to go on subtracting over here. You are going to get outstanding balances and on outstanding balances, you have to calculate the interest. All right. And depreciation. The last column is depreciation. Now, how to calculate depreciation? That is very simple. To calculate depreciation, it is very simple. You just have to take the cash price and depending upon the question whether it is a uh, straight line method or reducing balance method you have to charge the depreciation over here every asset will get depreciated right so you have to charge the depreciation normally nothing else see if 10 lakh then let's say 10 percent is the uh, straight line method and then then you have to charge one lakh every year okay that is how you do the depreciation so this is how you prepare this working note to calculate interest and principal amount so after preparing this uh, working note what you need to do is you need to prepare some accounts see 
these are the accounts that you need to prepare now we know under higher purchase system there are two parties yes there is one higher purchaser the one who purchases the asset and the higher vendor the one who sells the asset right under higher purchase system now each of these party will prepare their own books of accounts all right so higher purchaser will open asset account if he's if he is purchasing car then it will be car account okay then he will prepare higher vendor account see higher vendor account he will prepare because he has to pay to higher vendor higher vendor is his creditor so he has to open the account of higher vendor to keep the track of his accounts and then interest account he has to pay the interest so he will open interest account and he has to charge depreciation on his asset so he will also open depreciation account all right and then higher vendor higher vendor is the person who sells the asset sells the asset under higher purchase system so higher vendor will open two account that is higher purchaser account from whom he has to receive the money so higher purchaser is debtor of higher vendor because he's supposed to receive the money from higher purchaser so he will open the account of higher purchaser and then interest account he's also he's also supposed to receive interest so he will also open interest account simple these are the accounts that we need to prepare under higher purchase system this is very simple i will show you in the next video how to prepare all this and one more thing that i need to tell you is about the scenarios in which the questions may come see the question may come in three ways the first way is see the first scenario is the first scenario is when the installment would be given to you in the question rate of interest would be given to you in the question and as well as the cash rise all three will be given to you in the question so this is the default way and this is the most simple way that the problem may come and mostly in your final exams this way won't come okay mostly they will give you second or third scenario because this is very simple scenario though so they won't give you and the second scenario is when the installment will be given to you rate of interest also will be given to you but the cash price would not be given to you so you have to calculate the cash price by there are two methods to calculate cash price the first is annuity value method and the second one is backward method okay either of these two method you can use to calculate the cash price and do the problem i will show you in the next video and then in the third scenario the third scenario is when rate of interest would not be given to you when rate of interest is not given to you you have to use another kind of method and calculate the rate of interest with all the installments and everything okay so these were the three different scenarios in which questions may come so you have to be prepared and you have to know all these three different scenarios so that you can score maximum marks from this chapter all right now there is one more important thing that i need to tell you when the questions are based on the first scenario that is when all these three are given to you one important thing that you need to identify you need to see whether the interest is included in the installment or interest is not included in the installment now what do i mean by these two cases see these are two cases the questions may come in the first scenario see it is very simple okay don't over complicate it this is very simple basically this is the default way the case one is the default way okay this is the default way normally what happened normally installment comprises of interest as well as principal amount yes installment means interest plus principal this is what is happening over here see an amount will be given to you in the question normally okay by default i'm saying an amount will be given to you in the question let's say 5000 is given to you in the question and that 5000 would be in this case would be installment amount okay that would be installment amount and just for example that installment we know it comprises of principal amount as well as interest let's say principal is 4000 and interest is 1000 okay so 5000 was given to you in the question and it would directly go to the installment column it will directly go to the installment column here 5000 and then you will calculate the interest on outstanding balance and then you will deduct it with installment to calculate principal amount you will take it over here let's say 1000 then 1000 minus 5000 here would be 4000 simple that is what is happening in the case one now in the case two what is happening in the case two when interest is not included in the installment here an amount will be given to you in the question okay an amount will be given to you in the question which would almost look like installment amount which would almost look like installment amount but it would not be installment amount because in installment in installment i told you installment comprises of interest as well as principal amount but here it is already said interest is not included so if interest is not included that means this is 
principal amount this is purely principal amount there is no interest in it here interest was already included we deducted the interest over here to calculate the principal amount yes 5000 was given to us over here for example then in that 5000 there was interest of 1000 and principal amount of 4000 so you calculated the interest on outstanding balance and then deducted and then deducted with installment to calculate the principal amount that is what you did in the first case yes that is what you did in the first case but in the second case in the second case an amount is given which is purely principal amount which has no interest in it that is why it is principal amount you have to be very careful okay it almost looks like installment then you need to add the interest with it you have to calculate same way you have to calculate the interest on outstanding balance and then add with principal amount this let's say here 5000 is given you have to take that 5000 over here and add the interest and then you would get the installment add interest as well as principal and then you will get installment amount so here installment amount is given here principal amount is given okay because interest is not included in this amount that is why this is principal amount interest is added and then you got installment here an amount was given which included the interest that is why it is installment so so it comprises of two that is principal amount and interest but to calculate the interest of course we have to deduct the interest then only we can find out the principal amount but here to find out installment you have to add the interest okay it is very simple okay just if you don't understand rewatch this portion of the video and you will really really understand that this is very simple but the main challenge over here is to identify whether the interest is included or interest is not included see it is very simple to identify just by looking into the question you can identify you just have to look to the down payment and all the installment totals given in the question now this installment total can also be principal amount and also can be installment okay so you have to see down payment and all installment total whether you have to compare it you have to compare down payment and installment total with the cash price if it exceeds cash price that is what normally happens it exceeds cash price then interest is already included in installment okay if installment total and down payment all this total exceeds cash price if it is more than cash price then interest is already included in the installment if the interest is not included in the installment now how to identify this in this case down payment and installment total will be equal to cash price of course it will be equal to cash price yes cash price doesn't have any interest and the amount which are given to you here also doesn't have interest so the cash price and the installment total and down payment will be equal in this case okay there would not be any interest but here it will be more than cash price because there is interest interest is included it is very very simple it's logical here interest is included so the down payment and the installment total would be more than the cash price okay because cash price doesn't have any interest but here cash price and the down payment would be equal equal to cash price when down payment and all installment total equals to cash price this is how you identify in the first scenario whether the interest is included in the installment or interest is not included in the installment okay we saw the three different scenarios all right we are going to solve problems later videos in the later we are going to solve the problems in the later videos and then we saw the format of higher purchase system working note that we need to prepare in the beginning and also we saw the accounts that we need to prepare that was asset account higher vendor account interest account depreciation account in the books of higher purchaser and in the books of higher vendor we saw higher purchaser account and, and as well as interest account all right now in the next video we are going to solve a simple problem of the first scenario that is when all these three are given okay all right